station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready for the event. You look ready. Florida Atlantic University, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Florida Atlantic University. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Hello from the International Space Station. Hello. Thanks, Ann. We have our first question coming up right now. Hello, my name is John Kobus. I'm a mechanical engineering student at Florida Atlantic University in the College of Mechanical Engineering and Computer Science. And um, my question is, what are the desired qualifications to be an astronaut? And what skills or experiences made you stand out among your peers when applying to be an astronaut? Uh, that's a great question. I, uh, I came from a similar background as uh, as you. I was a mechanical engineering undergraduate at West Point, and uh, I had the exact same question uh, when I was studying. And uh, something that I have perspective on now is I, I realize that you know what you do as your career. Uh, you know, there's technical requirements to become an astronaut, and those things that you do are, are kind of what get you an interview, or kind of what make you basically qualified to be an astronaut. But how you do those things is, is actually what's really important to be, being selected. And what I mean by that is that uh, we are a very close team at NASA. We are constantly relying on each other uh, for, for lives. Uh, we are constantly working in teams. We are having to uh, uh, achieve goals and, and do big tasks and, and stay up all night studying and, and everything with each other. We really rely on one another. And so what's really important in this job is the ability to function as a team and to put the team's needs in front of your own. And I think that, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, when, when we're evaluating uh, new astronauts or new astronaut candidates is to look at what experiences have you had uh, over, your, over your life that have really uh, taught you the lessons of, of how to work in teams and how to rely on teams and get results. Um, and so, you know, uh, I, I had a lot of my experience in, in the military. Uh, I'm an Army officer, lieutenant colonel in the Army, um, and that, by nature, is a is uh, is definitely a team uh, a team event. Um, and and you know, this, the civilians they had different uh, experiences, like uh, working in Antarctica, working out in the field, where you can really gain the skills of working with other people. Um, but it's really how you do it. You know, when you really think about it. NASA is selecting people who are going to live in a very small uh, area together for a really long period of time, isolated from normal support structures. So, uh, you know, we look at like who can we work with uh, that we're going to get along with. Hi, my name is Kennedy Ramsaran, and I'm a student at Palm Beach Central High School. Um, my question is when did you know that you wanted to dedicate your life to becoming an astronaut? Well, the first time that I uh, told my parents I wanted to be an astronaut, I was actually three years old. And um, on my first day of pre-K, I, uh, when I went off to school, you know, I got some of the other kids were, you know, crying and didn't want to go to school. And I had my lunchbox, and I told my mom that I was going to school to learn to be an astronaut. And I was maybe four years old at the time. Um, and then just a couple of years later, uh, when I was five or six, uh, we had a school project to write little books. We probably illustrated them while the teacher wrote them, really. Um, and my book was about flying to space on a Soyuz. And so from a very early age, I, I knew that this is something that I wanted to pursue. And of course, as I grew up, that, that, that dream, that little kid passion dream, had to turn into a very realistic path. Uh, what I like to say is, you know, be unrealistic about your dreams, but be very realistic about your path. And you have to marry those two things up. There was something inside of me when I was little that, that knew that space flight was magical to me. It was something that was inspiring. And, and it's hard to answer the question why, because it's just this feeling that I had that this is, this is really what I wanted to do. And I would encourage everybody listening to listen to yourselves, uh, listen to that little voice inside of you that is passionate about doing something, even if you can't explain it. Uh, and, and, you know, see if you can make a realistic path to achieve that. Because when you're passionate about what you're doing, you are going to be better at what you're doing. You're going to enjoy it more. And, and quite honestly, it's so much work to achieve a dream like being an astronaut and, and many other dreams that, that you all have. 
those dreams take a lot of work and you're gonna have to be passionate and like what you do. And so for me, from a very early age, uh, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I knew that it was something that inspired me and luckily all the way along the path, um, I continued to enjoy uh, all of the stepping blocks to get here. Hi, uh, my name is Maria Boza and I am a student at Terra Environmental Research Institute. And my question is how rigorous is your mental and physical training to prepare your, for your time in space? Uh, the training is pretty intense. Uh, and I will say the training didn't start when I got to NASA. A lot of the lessons that I learned, many of the lessons that I uh, use up here in the space station were lessons that I learned prior to coming here. And so I think about all my time in the military and flying helicopters, becoming a test pilot, or playing international rugby, or getting master's degree in, in technical engineering fields. All of those I consider training for space flight because the lessons that I learned doing all of those things, I absolutely apply every day. Now the training specific for this flight, it was, it was intense, it was worldwide. We had training in Japan and in Germany and Russia and of course in Houston. Um, it's about a two year training program just for this one flight and that is after you do a two year basic training program just to be qualified to be assigned to a flight. So it's just under four years minimum in the actual technical training side at NASA uh, before you fly. Uh, and so as far as the rigor, I kind of liken it, it's kind of this mix of basic training, flight school, and, uh, and college all together, right? There's some things that are very academic, uh, learning the space station systems. There are some things like, to me, that, that, that seemed a lot like flying helicopters, uh, you know, this reacting to emergencies inside the space station and, and having that clarity of thought, going from a, you know, kind of a, a chill, low gain environment to a high gain environment very quickly. And then there are some things that are very physical. Uh, for instance, training for spacewalks in our in our pool, the neutral buoyancy lab, that can be a very physical challenge. And that I drew a lot on my rugby years uh, for, for some of that physical stuff. So it's really the, it's not only just a physical or a mental challenge, but it's really the combination of all of those that makes the training pretty intense. Uh, but as I said, when you're passionate about a dream, that doesn't seem like work. And, and, and really you have to be passionate in order to in, put the effort in uh, required to excel in all those different areas. Hello, my name is Yasmin Zaruki, and I'm a student at Florida Atlantic University High School. And my question is, um, could you please describe the experience and your actual trip to space? And what do you feel emotionally and physically while in the rocket? Yeah, and that, that is a question that for me is going to take a lifetime to answer because, well, first of all, I'm an engineer, so words don't come easily. Maybe some of you guys can relate to that. Uh, if there was a math equation to describe the launch, then maybe I'd be able to figure it out a little bit easier. But uh, um, to me, it was a really profound experience. And, you know, I, I liken it to, you know, like where does nausea come from in your body? That's when your eyes and your vestibular system sense something different and it gets confused. The launch day was like my eyes and my ears and my body, I, I knew logically that I was sitting on a rocket ship and I was going to space. But there was something in my brain that was, it was so unbelievable to me that it's like I didn't even trust what I was seeing, hearing, or feeling because, you know, there's always this little bit of doubt. Right up until, really, up until when you launch, you're always thinking, well, maybe, maybe the launch is going to get scrubbed. Maybe we're going to get delayed. Maybe something's going to happen. You know, and especially, you know, I, I've been wanting to do this for, since I was three years old. So this is 36 years, a culmination of a dream. So not only was it spectacular technically, but it was this culmination of my, my life. And it was like the first moment in my life where I knew that I was going to go. I knew that I was on a rocket and I knew I, it was, I was achieving this dream. And so you combine that, that culmination of those, that, those emotions with looking out, I'll never forget looking out the Soyuz window for the first time and seeing the curvature of the earth. And it was a sunrise and I saw the blue glint stretch across the horizon on earth and it was this physical beauty that I, I, I can't even describe with words. In fact, putting words to it almost seems to do it disjust, uh, injustice. And so uh, unfortunately, the best way I can describe it is that it's completely indescribable. And I probably will struggle the rest of my life to try to describe that to people because I know it's an experience that so few people have. And uh, it, it was really just spectacular. Um, now, physically, it, it was a lot like being in the simulator, to be honest, you know, it, it looked the same. We have great training aids on the ground to prepare us for these moments. 
Um, and the difference being, of course, you're getting pressed into this rocket and, and it's, you know, you're wrapping your mind around the fact that you are sitting on this rocket full of fuel that is on fire and you are going off the planet. Um, it is, it is, there was nothing like it. It was the most profound experience of my life. Alfonso and I am a student at Mass Academy. My question is, can you describe a typical day at, on the International Space Station? Sure. Well, the best part of the day is, of course, we get to float everywhere. Um, but uh, but I get, bet you guessed that already. Um, uh, and believe it or not, we do have typical days. You know, we're up here for six months at a time. Uh, right now, I've been up here for about two and a half months. And uh, and believe it or not, we do have typical days, and then we have a lot of atypical days. So a typical day on the space station is a 12-hour work day. Uh, we get up in the morning about 6 a.m. And about 7.30, we have a tag up between all the control centers on the ground and our whole crew, and we go over any changes to the plan for that day. Um, you know, any big picture words. And then we follow a timeline that is set uh, set by the ground for us. And on that timeline, we could have any number of, of things to be doing, but they fall into two major categories. And one is maintenance of the space station. Uh, so this space station is a football field sized orbiting laboratory with its own, uh, you know, power and plumbing and, and all these systems that, that require care. And our engineers on the ground have uh, have uh, identified all the preventative maintenance that we need to do, and so we spend time uh, doing maintenance. You know, it might be uh, topping up our water systems or cleaning air filters. And then the other portion of the time is done doing what we call utilization or science. Um, and this is really the meat of why we have an International Space Station, is to learn, to learn about our bodies, to learn about our world, to learn about our planets. And so we could be touching any number of, of experience uh, or experiments during the day. And so we have hundreds and hundreds of experiments going on at all times on the International Space Station, uh, and we touch various ones at different times. Uh, and so, uh, for instance, you know, recently I did uh, uh, some microscope work looking at pro protein crystal growths, uh, where we're, we're growing crystals on space station that can be used on the ground later to, uh, to investigate the pathology of Parkinson's disease. Uh, and so, yeah, you know, you can do any, any number of uh, science, um, science tasks throughout the day. And so a combination of maintenance and science. And then we have a closing meeting at the end of the day, usually about 7, 7.30 at night, so about a 12-hour workday. And then in the evening, uh, we get some time to relax and look out the uh, cupola window back at our Earth, try to capture some pictures of a sunset or a sunrise maybe, and have a dinner with our crewmates and kind of relax a little bit. And uh, we have a typical five-day work week. And uh, weekends, we have a little more relaxation time, although we do have to uh, do some weekend cleaning every weekend. Astronaut McLean, uh, it has been a privilege talking to you. Thank you for taking our questions and safe travels. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from Florida Atlantic University. Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications.